Masters does. So extremely pleased that he was able to write the foreword to my book, Entrepreneurial Happiness, um, and also that he's going to be he's able to dial in this evening. So we can't see you at the moment, moment Andy. Are you going to are you going to um, turn your video on so we can see you? And then what I would suggest is we put Andy on speak of you so that we can see him. Um, can you even hear us, Andy, at the moment? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. I'm here. Excellent. Here he is. Um, hey, how you doing? So, Andy Harrington, meet the, the Entrepreneur of Happiness Room. Thank you very much for joining us. It's really, really brilliant for you to um, be a part of this. And you just, you said you'd, you'd say a, uh, a few words just about the book and about, um, about uh, what, you, what you know about it and, um, and why you were happy to, to contribute to it. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. In fact, look, it arrived today. So your, your, your um, admin's working well, mate. So well done. Uh, good looking book, very appealing from the beginning. And you know, what I'd like to say is very timely. I think given the state of the world right now and therefore the massive interruption in business, this is an opportunity for us all to reflect on what business really is. And obviously many of us, including me, and probably many people listening into this call, watching in, have had the experience of sacrificing their uh, livelihoods, their, um, their family life, uh, and in some cases, just their hobbies and dreams and other passions for indeed running a business. And if, uh, COVID-19 has taught us anything. It's to reevaluate that uh, uh, at a very important time, I think. So now is the time for us to all see that business doesn't have to be a chore. It doesn't have to be something you do just for the sake of doing it. And now is an opportunity to realize that we all need the mental health and we all need to have the balance in our lives. It's easy to speak about, but this massive life-changing event has really hit home to many people just how much we really need each other in our families more than we obviously need business. So I hope that this will stimulate a completely new way of thinking and the old, you know, go and just, you know, have a badge of honor because you work a 12 hour day. Um, hopefully that will dissipate now. And what we replace with is more authenticity, more caring. Because I think that's where we're probably going to go next. If if the 80s was all about sales and, and the 90s um, was more about marketing and the, the noughties was all about sort of digital marketing, uh, maybe the next few years is going to be more about something heart-centered, something much more um, appealing to us as humans than just making money. Now, obviously, you know, I don't want to dissipate and diminish the making money part, obviously, but today more than ever, you know, the whole thing about, you know, traveling to go to work and, you know, the whole trudging into a city. I think all that's going to change because, you know, if anything's going to happen, commercial properties are going to go down a lot because big businesses aren't going to be thinking about having big monolith kind of uh, offices anymore. We've already seen that cities are a high risk for people to be living in now because of coronavirus, etc. The risk is increased. And me, for one, having, you know, had an office and now decided that I actually don't need an office anymore uh, because, you know, I couldn't have it anyway. And so I kind of ran my business with that and went, hey, this is really cool. We don't need an office. Um, but at the same time, also recognizing the balance, coming back to that again, that people don't just go to, to work to make money. They go to work to create relationships <clears throat> and friendships <clears throat> and social groups. And so we have to find a way to keep on still providing that for other people, those social groups. It just doesn't mean that doesn't have to be the everyday experience for everyone. It'd be a, like a monotony. It now becomes something special when that groups get together and uh, we use our time more wisely. So I think your, your book is very timely. Uh, Entrepreneurial happiness at a time where it is needed the most. Uh, great framework in it. Your better future framework in here is fantastic. And, you know, finding that, that balance between money, time and enjoyment. And, and, you know, all of us planning as equally our other interests, our family time, and putting those into the diary before we start putting in uh, our clients. Because, look, what is a business anyway? A business is about you taking care of other people. So 
you know, that's what you do. A business must take care of its clients. That's, it takes a special kind of person to say, I'm going to take care of strangers, right? But let's not, let's not forget that we don't want to make our families strangers. You know, we need to look after those people first. So they need to feel important. They need some time in the diary that's marked out especially for them. Um, and if we can all move towards something like that, then maybe this COVID-19 will have some other advantages that hopefully will remain and last a lifetime. Now, most of you will know Charlie fairly well, I'm assuming. And if you don't, then he's one of the good guys in the financial industry. Um, obviously, financial advisors have been known for years for you know, taking large fees and uh, obviously you know, not really serving their clients with their best interests. Charlie's kind of different. He's a different kind of guy. He cares about his clients. Uh, he, you know, he's not trying to become something he isn't. He wants to just create uh, a something valuable for others that not only is that serves people, but does it in a way that, that where they feel like they're his friends and they can trust him. So he really is a trusted advisor, and that's what I respect enormously. You know, we, we spent some time together. He's been on my programs. And together we have spent some, you know, some lunches, some dinners, even a cricket match at Lords. And it's that kind of thing that I think that business needs to become even more of. So just bringing it back to that message of caring again and, and really making love the central piece, not even passion, but actually love, loving what you do, loving your clients um, and really putting that spirit of love into everything you do so that there isn't, this compartmentalization of us only having love in certain areas of our life, but love can be pervasive and spill out across all areas of our life such that all of us can share in that experience. And I'm really proud to be uh, chosen to write the, the forward for this book and uh, delighted to be here to, to share this uh, little message here for Charlie. So that's it. Good luck for Charlie. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Andy. That's a, that's a weird round of applause when everybody's on mute. So, uh, but that's very <laughs> kind. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Unfortunately, I can see a few visuals there. Uh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Andy, for, for sharing that. Uh, so I am going to share my screen with you now, and I'll just spend a little bit of time talking about, um, you know, where this book was born out of and, uh, and what it's really trying to do. Um, because I suppose really what I started to see both in my own life and in the life of my business owning clients was that you know there was there was there was this battle to make more and more money as, as Andy rightly says you know it's absolutely vital that we have a business that is making good money but also not having enough time to do the other things that are important outside of work having a really bad work-life balance um, and compounding that actually getting to a situation where work had become a chore you know it set up their own business to do these amazing things and really it wasn't working out like that and you know i couldn't agree with andy more in terms of the timing of this book and that of course is completely but luck by luck but i think you know now at the moment in um in this covid19 lockdown there's never been a better time to kind of reevaluate our life really reevaluate our business life our work-life balance you know, somebody um, once, I, was, I saw somewhere on, um, on some social media somewhere that in this period of lockdown, you've really got four paths that you're likely to, to take. Um, you could become a hunk, you could become a monk, you could become a chunk, or you become a drunk. So which path do you choose? You know, you need to choose wisely. And, and now is a great time to be kind of reevaluating things and thinking, well, okay, how can I get my life back on, on track, on the track that I want it to be as opposed to the track that I've, I've been put on? And so that's really what it's about. It's about that balance of, of making good money, about having a good work-life balance, but also loving what you do. And I suppose it was born out of um, a number of different things that happened in my life. But the first one that really sprung to mind when I started writing this book, um, and I'll tell you kind of more about um, why in it a bit was I was I want to take you back to uh, to 1999 and to um, Perth, Western Australia, and I was travelling around the world uh, and I was I just arrived in Perth and I'd been told that my uncle Bill would collect me from the from the airport and never met Uncle Bill before, no idea what he was going to turn turn out to be like, but I, Uncle Bill turned up and he turned up as this David Hasselhoff type character, this 
crazy, crazy Australian guy that took me on this tour of Perth, Australia, and was kind of pointing out all these amazing houses and things like that that he'd, that he'd um, sold in his, in, uh, or looked after in his business. And he took us um, on this tour and he was telling me about how the fact that uh, every morning he, he swam in, in Cottesloe Beach, uh, on Cottesloe Bay, um, and then went for, for breakfast here in I think what's called Beaches, uh, with a load of other successful business owners. And he just seemed to have this, this great life. And then he took us back to his, his house and got this amazing, this amazing house. And of course, I just, I just met him for the first time. But he said, hey, Charlie, hey, by the way, bad accent, so I apologize, apologize for that. Um, but hey, Charlie, how was your first day in Australia? Well, Bill, it's really interesting. You know, I've just come from traveling around uh, Africa and clearly this place is completely different to, to Africa, but it's also completely different to any other city I've been to. But what's really interesting is you've got this amazing house. You've got these uh, amazing artifacts around the, the house. How, how, you know, where, how did you get to all of this? Uh, and he said, well, Charlie, I, I run my own business. So I travel three months of every year. Some of it around Australia, but some of it around the world. I said, three months? You, tr you take three months off each year? Isn't there some sort of rule against that? Aren't you only allowed to have 25 days holiday? And he said, Charlie, if you work for somebody else's business, you follow their rules. You run your own business, you make the rules. And that was like a seed growing in me for a while. And I was like, I couldn't quite you know, get my head around this guy, how this guy got this amazing place and traveled the world and only worked um, nine months of the year. So I want to fast forward now to, um, uh, to uh, pretty much later on that year. Uh, so that was, that was about January 2000, uh, 1999, about September 1999, I found myself in Russell Square House in central London. Uh, and I can only describe this scene as being a bit like the, a film, the film The Wolf of Wall Street. You know, it was all pinstripe suits, white shirts, this testosterone-fueled sales atmosphere. And this big bald guy called Justin, uh, another farmer's son, uh, takes, takes me through this, this kind of open floor um, sales uh, office. And he sits me down and he starts talking to me about it. And you know, he sits me down in this chair that's about a quarter of the size of his chair. So I'm dwarfed underneath him in this kind of very typical sales uh, approach. And, and he said to me, uh, and he basically just took about a pen and paper and he said, Charlie, there's two types of people in this world. There's people A, person A that are employed, and there's person B that are self-employed. Now the person A, they tend to earn a bit more money to start with. Um, but then their, their kind of options and their uh, opportunity kind of don't really grow that quickly. Whereas the self-employed person, they tend to earn a bit less at the start. They tend to have to work a bit more, but in time they end up getting much more flexibility and not being able to earn much more money. He said, which person are you? I thought, well, this is easy. I, you know, I'm a farmer's son. I've grown up in a self-employed environment. Uh, and, but Uncle Bill was definitely in the self-employed person B category. So I was like, right, I'm definitely person B. So I ended up falling into the world of financial services by mistake, as Andy's already alluded to, and most of you know kind of a little bit about. Um, and it, it kind of started getting traction. I worked, you know, stupidly long hours. I started to make a success of it. Um, and then suddenly some news came through that um, Uncle Bill had passed away. And actually, not only had he passed away, he'd taken his own life. And it, it completely... Um, shook me because I'd got Uncle Bill in this in this amazing light of being this incredibly successful entrepreneur, this this incredibly successful guy that you know had the perfect work life balance, the perfect setup, and yet something had clearly gone wrong. Something I didn't understand had gone wrong, and you know he was full, he was achieving everything he wanted to achieve, but there was something something missing. So I want to fast forward now to. Um, uh, the Excel Arena in this was in 2012, uh, and uh, no, it wasn't. I wasn't at the Olympics. You'll be um, you'll be unsurprised to hear. But actually, I was at an event um, called Unleash the Power Within, 
which is his most famous, um, the most famous event by a guy called Tony Robbins. And it's made famous because of, of, of a firewalk. Uh, and yes, so that means over the course of, uh, of that four days that both Carol and I walked across burning hot coals. But it actually wasn't the firework that, for firework that, that changed my life that weekend. It was what gets known as the Dickens process. And for those of you that don't know, Tony Robbins is this massive six foot seven American guy. And he's got teeth bigger than I am. Uh, and out of the darkness comes something along the lines of, uh, and by the way, we're in this room and it's, there's people screaming, yelling, crying um, as part of this thing that's called the Dickens process. And Tony says from the stage, I want you to imagine what your life will look like 20 years from now. Because it's in our moments of decision, our destiny is changed. What decisions are you making that's going to influence your life 20 years from now? And I thought about it. And I thought, well, you know, I've got this great business. You know, I've got a set of official portfolio. I'm in the process of setting up um, the rural business community, which is a, 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 a service was a service office business that I've subsequently sold. I was I was also I'd also founded a, a power planning business, which is now called ePowerplan, and it was all going really well, except you know, and we were starting to do well, but actually I started to think about what he said. And I thought about it and thought, well, actually I'm three stone overweight. I'm in the worst shape of my life. I'm working every hour God send. You know, I'm literally working full time on official portfolio during the day. I put the girls to bed at night and then I go back to work on all of the rural business community stuff. And my work life balance is hideous. And he asked us to think about what this life 20 years from now would look like. And all I could imagine was sitting in a one bedroom flat, surrounded by pizza boxes, weighing 20 stone. My businesses had folded, Carol and the girls had left me because I knew I wasn't on the right track to get me to where I wanted to be. And I genuinely didn't want that, that 20 years to look like that. And so I wonder, you know, what decisions are you making today that um, are going to influence your life 20 years from now? And, and what decisions could you make that could really transform your life in the future? So anyway, I left uh, Unleash the Power Within um, with some words ringing in my ear that, that Tony said, which was, if you make the same decisions today as you made yesterday, you'll get the same results tomorrow as you got today. So I left with this completely different mindset of changing my life and, and changing the way I approach things. So I went out and I learned from every source possible. So I did other Tony Robbins courses. I did uh, 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 Enlightened Warrior training camps. I, as I said, I did Andy Harrington's courses and learned um, about public speaking and about um, and the power to achieve. Uh, I went off and read every book I could find that, that, uh, that was, uh, I thought would further um, the business and um, me personally. And I was a, a part of the strategic coach program as well as lots of other things. And it was all just with a view to kind of battling through to try and find the best ways of doing things possible. And gradually over the years, things you know, really did make a, a, make, uh, a, a significant change. So you know, the efficient portfolio business is now a far bigger business than it was back then. We've grown our new business levels by over 50% in five of the last seven years, which is pretty, you know, it's 50% year on year in five of those seven years, which is pretty great growth for most businesses. Um, but I'm about to launch a new business called Tribathlon. I've had two books published up until now. Um, and just, you know, business got better and better. We made every year just got better and better as a business but at the same time and, and, and actually that kind of led on to some interesting successes like being on um, ITV and being on the cover of magazines in our industry and, and several other things um, but all of that was done at a time where I completely rejigged my work-life balance uh, and so I now take three months off a year to spend really quality time with my with my family as you can see from the uh, uh, if, if they duck into the screen, this is a slightly older photo. But you know that work-life balance is so important, um, uh, and you know, it's, but it's taken a lot of time to kind of work out how to get there. And then, from a health point of view, I've gone from being three stone heavier than uh, than I am today to uh, competing in Ironmans. So I did my first Ironman last year um, in Italy, uh, and so my fitness is at, a, at the best level it's ever been by a mile. My work-life balance is in the best position it's ever been. 
and financially as a business we're doing as well as we've ever done and so what i did was i thought well okay what i want to do is i've read all of these books and all these courses i've kind of worked with some of the, the top guys in in the world on in their areas of expertise i thought well, what are all the best ideas i've come up with and i wanted to get those ideas down into some sort of format so that firstly they were in our business our business could use those um, better and, and more wisely but also i wanted to get that message out there as to what were the best ideas i found both from the books and, and courses and things like that but also what have i discovered over those over those years of you know 14 years that efficient portfolio has now been running and what i really started to think about was what what is entrepreneurial happiness you know what is that sweet spot um in the uh, you know where, where what is entrepreneurial happiness in that you know for a business owner what are we all striving for and I concluded there was probably three elements to it. So the first one is definitely money. You know, you, if you don't have enough money coming into your business, then you can't afford to employ the people that you want to employ. You can't afford to employ the marketing strategies that you want to uh, do. Uh, but also you can't take out the money as the business owner that you deserve and therefore you can't live the life that you deserve. So money has got to be um, uh, one of the, the elements. But it's certainly not, as Andy said, certainly not the be all and end all. And actually, I think that probably our most valuable resource is time because, you know, you've only got to ask somebody that's sick uh, what the most valuable resource is. And that is time. Because no matter, no matter how much money you've got, if you're on your deathbed, you can't go buy any more time. Not yet. Anyway, maybe that will change. Who knows? So if you don't have enough time, if you don't have your work life balance sorted out, then you can't afford to spend the time, you can't spend the time with the people that you care most about. You can't spend the time doing the activities that you care most about. And you also can't spend the time looking after yourself physically and mentally. You, know, you can't look after yourself. And you know, what good is having all the money in the world if, if you're in no shape to, to be able to enjoy it and you don't have the relationship with the people that you care about to enjoy it with. So the work-life balance and the time element is really important. But then finally, it's about you know, when you're at work, you really want to enjoy what you're doing. Because I meet so many business owners that they got into a business for, because of a particular passion. You know, I tell the story of a carpenter in, in Entrepreneurial Happiness that he got into it because he loved making uh, kitchen furniture. And yet actually, as, he, as the business evolved, he spent less and less time making kitchen furniture and more and more time doing the other stuff that involved being in the business. And so I actually found that the fun element of running the business had just, had just gone for it. And, you know, we spent a huge amount of time, you know, if I have three months of the year off, that means I've got nine months of the year working. I should, you know, that's a huge amount of my life that I want to make sure that I'm actually really enjoying. So what I did was I took all the best ideas that I'd found over the years, and I started to put them, you know, categorize them as to which areas they fell into and what i did was i took all the best areas that I, I i felt related to the money side of the business and put them into a system called the profitable business plan and so the profitable business plan oops, uh, the profitable business plan is really about saying well okay how can we make more money in our business but also how can we be much more aware of the money in our business so it's about looking at working with other people other partnerships uh, working with businesses that have the same customers and clients as you, but don't compete with you to really accelerate the amount of um, leads that you can generate into your business. It's about generating leads through things like social media in the modern day of marketing, as opposed to using TV and radio advertising. It's about using all the tools we have available to us today to generate more and more leads into your business. But it's also about having an awareness of the numbers in your business. You know, What's happening with the money that you're making? What's happening across your business? How, if you want to have a better work-life balance and spend less time in your business, you've got to have really clear clarity on what's going on in your business to avoid it going wrong. And then finally, it's also about making sure that as the business owner, you can extract the money in the most tax efficient way and use it in the best way possible so that you get the big, biggest bang for your buck. You know, I meet a load of business owners that are brilliant at their business, but they're financially not doing very well because they just they just don't have the time to deal with the money side of it. Um, so the profitable business plan is about pulling all of those elements together. And then I took all of the best ideas that related to time and work-life balance and put them into what I call the free life business model, which is a five-step 
uh, model uh, that really is about saying, well, okay, if you want to get a better work-life balance, you've got to magnify everything that you've done yourself so that other people can do it. And whether that's being magnified digitally or whether that's being magnified by other people in your team doing what you would normally do, uh, it's, it's about um, really kind of magnifying the power of what, of what of your experience that got you to where you got to. It's about having amazing operations in your business or outstanding operations, like as I call them in, in Entrepreneur and Happiness, so that a predictable um, approach to your business works, happens time and time again, regardless of whether you get involved in that process or not. It's about delegating more and more of what you do to other people. Essentially, somebody, a, a solicitor that I know described it as cloning herself. She needed to clone herself to be able to grow her business. And that's exactly what this is about. It's about cloning yourself. And I have quite a few people say, oh, you know, I met so-and-so in your business and they sounded just like you, Charlie. In fact, they look just like you. And there's, you know, there's a reason for that because we have, a very, we have very clear processes that we want people to, to follow um, so, that, so that they are predictable results. But it's also about if you want to have a healthy business, you've got to be a healthy business owner. You've got to look after yourself physically to be able to sustain great levels of work and to be, to, to be, you know, to set a good example to your team. So it's vital that you look at how you can improve your own health and well-being. And then finally, the free life business model is also about thinking about life. It's about what's really important to you in the future. Now, how can you set set specific goals to create the life of your dream? And so that's that's really what it's about. It's about looking at all of those different areas and and ultimately. I believe those are the key components to creating a better work-life balance. And then finally, uh, because we spend so much time at work and we want to really enjoy what we do, uh, I put the four key principles uh, of, of fun into the Epic Business Blueprint. And the Epic Business Blueprint is really about creating an amazing culture in your business. So you're surrounded by people that really get what you're trying to do and that you really want to be around. So one of the interesting things about COVID-19 is that the, the official portfolio team are consistently saying they're missing each other's company and working together. And they're really missing, you know, we're creating it through Zoom, but only to a limited extent. And they're really missing the, the engagement of, of being in the office together. And that's because we've created a business where we've got this really brilliant culture running through the, the veins of the business. But if you want your business to continue to thrive and you want to enjoy it, you've got to be able to see it growing. You know, there's a, a saying that is, if you're not growing, you're dying. And the same applies to your business. And if you can cons consistently see your business improving, you're going to enjoy the work so much better. So you've got to learn to consistently innovate into, uh, in your business. And there's a system within there that I, that I give you, which is... Um, a series of different meetings that will that will allow you to make sure that every month you're innovating a different part of your business um, and then uh, you have to uh, uh, plan your business better and the way to do that is to start to have um, a leadership team and plan with your leadership team exactly what's going on in, in the future of the business um, a bit like setting goals for you personally but working with the team to create business goals but having leadership uh, or leaders within your team so that actually gradually they take more and more responsibility within your business. And then finally, it's about the end game. It's about really setting some, some uh, clear path and the clear strategies for success and making sure that, that all of these different areas are, um, are ticked off in your life. And, and I believe if you, if you do that and you follow the approach within there and in, in entrepreneurial happiness, there's a, a number of exercises to take you through that will lead you, you know, kind of lead you and help you in these different areas to make sure that you can make more money in your business, that you can have a work, better work-life balance, and also that you can re-engineer your business so that you, that you absolutely love your time when you're there. Um, and, that's, and that's really what it's all about. That's why I, I wrote the book. Um, if you want to buy it, uh, and it's available on Amazon, it's a, obviously it's a shame that we can't um, be doing this launch uh, in person. I'd love to be able to sign a few books and maybe share a glass or two of uh, champagne with you, but that's not going to happen uh, in this day and age at the moment, is it? You can go to, to Amazon uh, and just search for Entrepreneur of Happiness, or you can go to charlieredding.com forward slash eh, uh, and you can um, 
uh, you can get get the link to, to buy the book there. Um, uh, obviously, if, if you were buying the book at the launch event, I would love to have been able to sign it, but clearly I can't do that. I'll more than happily sign it as of when I see you. But as a way of compensating you for that, um, if you let us know, if you send us um, uh, proof that you've bought the book, then what we'll do is we'll send you a really lovely leather uh, bookmark. It won't be this one. This was just an example that I, I took. Uh, and in addition to that, we'll send you a, a copy of um, one of our other books, which will also be signed. And then when I see you, I'll be more than happy to, um, uh, to, to, to sign the book for you. Um, and also help you uh, in the ways that, uh, that I talk about in the book. And so there's a lot of resources now on charlieredding.com. So you can, so some of the tools I talk about, like the successful business scorecard, um, the uh, better future framework, the limitless life planner, and the leadership meetings uh, and the specific agendas, they're all on, on uh, charlieredding.com as well to be able to download, as well as a workbook that works, you know, that talks you through all of the different exercises um, in there. So that's pretty much it from me. It just leaves me to say, I just want to say a huge thank you for all the people that helped me getting this book in, uh, in place. That obviously starts with Carol and the girls putting up with, uh, with my antics. Uh, for mum and dad who inspired me with Bic, particularly growing up on a farm, to see the self-employed environment firsthand. And whilst I probably didn't get it at the time, um, certainly when I started understanding the difference between person A and person B, it really... Um, really helped me to have been a part of a person B family. Um, and of course, to all the efficient portfolio team that have been huge support, particularly Charlotte and, and Victoria and helping me with this particular project. Um, but they are a brilliant team and, uh, and so I'm extremely grateful for their help on this journey. Um, uh, and finally, for some of the people that have just kind of helped guide me along the way. So I've got, uh, as we know, we've got Andy Harrington here, who's been a massive influence uh, on me over the years and um, and also John Watkinson who's my Vistage coach who's also extremely helpful so a huge thank you for, for all of those guys Nitesh who's helped us with the website as well um, the, in case you weren't sure he's the one with the bow tie on um, uh, so massive thank you to, to all of you um, and uh, and that's really all I have for you tonight so if you'd like to stay and ask me any questions about um, entrepreneurial happiness I'd be delighted to uh, to talk to you about it some more. I'm also happy to share a glass of fizz with you while now that we're done and I can open this. Um, but does anyone have any questions about entrepreneurial happiness or um, anything kind of relating to it, I suppose? If, by the way, if you do, can you just unmute yourself so that you can then speak because you will be muted at the moment? Everybody's stunned into silence. <laughs> Charlie, I've definitely yes. got to ask you what happened to poor old Uncle Bill. Why did he end his life in such a dramatic and sad way? Um, well, it's a good point, actually. And I actually, something that I meant to touch on right at the end, and I, and I, uh, I didn't. Do you know what? I actually don't know that side of the family very well, and I don't know enough about it. All I know is that he had certain problems in his business, and he decided that that, that was... Um, enough for him but one, one of the things that it kind of um the story that most uh, aligned with for me was um the story of robin williams actually and so this is another story i talk about in the book and you know robin williams was this incredible character wasn't he you know he's the funniest actor you've ever seen producing some amazing films but he then went and won an oscar for doing what he wasn't supposed to be good at which was doing serious films he had incredible tv series he just did everything, he achieved everything he could have wanted to achieve. And yet, he clearly wasn't happy because he too took his own life. And I think, so one of the things I talk about in entrepreneurial happiness is this difference between uh, the science of, of achievement, which is what you know, some of us are very good at, particularly being business owners and setting goals and achieving those goals. But then there's also the art of fulfillment. And the art of fulfillment is much more about being happy with what you've got and, and, and actually being grateful. And there's a, a whole load of exercises in entrepreneurial happiness that are about trying to make you more grateful or, or kind of improve your, because you can't write a book called Entrepreneurial Happiness without talking about happiness as a core theme, can you? So there's a whole load of things in there, including something that I won't share with you, but it's a secret that's essentially running through the book that is, um, uh, that ultimately I think is the key to happiness rather than um, 
you know, I, I don't think happiness is this destination that we all end up in at some point in the future. Happiness is more about the journey. So can you contrast happiness and contentment? Well, well that's a good question, isn't it? I mean, I would suspect that they are um, one and the same thing often, aren't they? Uh, you know, being content with your lot is, um, uh, is I could probably a, a key part of happiness. I mean, you can, you can meet some extremely wealthy and successful people that aren't happy, and you can meet some extremely uh, happy um, people that have a life, you know, a massively challenging life. So um, I think, yeah, contentment is a, is a key part of it as well. Mm. Anybody else got any questions or any comments? Martin? Charlie, I mean, you're, you've obviously uh, found yourself in a very good place in your work and your life, but where do you, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years time? Um, great question. So I think that, uh, I know for a fact that if, you know, if I was to ever exit efficient portfolio and all the other businesses, I would go completely stir crazy. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know, I've got some specific goals for efficient portfolio and we will continue to grow uh, uh, passively. We're not going to go off on a big acquisition trail. Um, we'll, we'll continue to grow passively. Um, and I always see being a part of that, but I see gradually spending less and less time in that business and growing other businesses as well. But I also see, you know, uh, it's something I talk about in, in the book, which is actually a strategic coach term called the retirement trick, which is about saying, well, look, if you get to the point where you only work on the terms that you were, you want to work on, you only do the bit of the business that you absolutely love, why would you ever stop? So it really is, a, for me, it's about kind of just continuing to align that work-life balance and whatever that, whatever that looks like over time, I think, I think will evolve, but gradually spending you know, that nine months will maybe come down to six months gradually and who knows, maybe it'll come down to three months, but I'll always be doing something along the lines of, you know, whether it's official portfolio, whether it's triathlon, something like that, because I know that that is something that I need to, um, to keep me mentally stimulated. And I know that I would drive Carol and the girls crazy if I didn't have that. You have to, you have to be careful with that response with the family listing. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, I've got, I've got a, a question for you. So I know I know you're well read and you're well you're well trained in both your field, just and in entrepreneurial business. Is there is there a, a single person that's inspired you the most as an entrepreneur, or is it more a collection of all your your learnings? I didn't know whether you particularly sort of have a go-to person when you think about this. Thing. I think there's several for different reasons. So for personal development. Uh, Definitely Tony Robbins, you know, the, the events I've done with Tony Robbins were absolutely off the chart compared to anything else I've done and were life changing. Um, from a business point of view, I think strategic coach has been absolutely brilliant uh, and continues to be. And I've only fairly recently um, started Vistage, but Vistage, um, certainly I can see that performing a, a, a similar role in that, but I've just not done it for as long. Um, and uh, from things like a... Uh, uh, public speaking point of view, Andy Harrington um, uh, has really helped me, not just in terms of what to do on the stage, but how to build a business around speaking element. Um, so that, that he's been really very good. Yeah, probably, I think there's different people for different reasons. And then from a financial services point of view, there's a guy called David Batchelor, that was my mentor for, for many years. I'm still uh, very, very good friends with him. So from a financial service point of view, probably I would say him. But yeah, those are the, those are the people that spring to mind. Um, but I would say a huge amount of what I've got is from books. You know, I do read a lot of books and actually I listen to a lot of books. Uh, and that I, I mean, you know, Jim Rowan is famous for saying, if you want to have a guaranteed strategy to be wealthy beyond your dreams, 25 years from now, the one thing that you can do is to read a book a week. If you read a book a week, then you will, uh, you will learn so much. You can't help but learn stuff if you read a book a week. And if you do that, then you'll pick, you know, even if you get one idea from a book, it's worth it because actually the compound effect of all of those ideas is huge. And that's really, I think, probably the, the strategy that's worked 
best for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Anybody else got any questions or any? I've got a random one. Go on, Natasha. Um, any person, fictional or non, throughout the whole time of history that you could have dinner with? Um, only one. You can't have a dinner party. Oh, man, that's really difficult, isn't it? Um, I think it would have to be Nelson Mandela. Uh, I, we took the girls to, we've been to South Africa uh, a few times, and it's a place that, well, Carol and I got engaged there. It's a place very close to our heart. And we took the girls back there, la, uh, not last year, the year before last, and we took them to Robin Island, uh, which is the first time I'd been to Robin Island, actually. And it's just such an incredible story to learn more about him he was an incredible guy so yeah i think it'd have to be nelson mandela cool. um but uh yeah that's a tricky one i was actually i was only last week thinking about on the bike it's something to to do while on a long bike ride i was thinking about who would be the 10 people that i would invite to the dinner party and it's it's evolved over the years for sure but um but yeah mandela would definitely be there any other questions or anybody Got any other comments? No. Okay, brilliant. Well, in that case, a massive thank you to you all for dialing in. Apologies we couldn't do this in person, but um, hopefully you'll have a, a drink on me. And as I say, if you buy a copy of Entrepreneurial Happiness, we'd let us know. And um, we'd love to send you a, a leather bookmark um, to, to uh, sit in Entrepreneurial Happiness, but we'll also send you a copy of either the Dream Retirement or Smart Money, whichever you want. Um, uh, or if you wanted an extra copy of Entrepreneurial Happiness instead because you've already got those other two um, to pass on to a friend we could do that as well I suppose um, so uh, yeah huge thank you for dialing in um, I hope you enjoy it if you do enjoy it please go to Amazon and put a review on there uh, if you don't enjoy it you can let me know by all means just don't put the review on Amazon please um, but I'm sure you will I'm sure you'll get loads of uh, good, good um, ideas from it uh, it's, it's, as I said with the dream of time, actually, the, the key to a good book is often the questions it asks you, not the answers it gives you. So hopefully this will ask you more questions when you go through the, the exercises in, in the workbook um, than, than it answers it tries to give you. Uh, and in fact, actually, that's one um, piece of advice I would give you is if you do read it, please do do the exercises in the workbook because you, of all the people that read the dream retirement, the ones that did the exercises were the ones that had the most transformational effect on. Um, and I know that, um, for, for example, I remember Kieran saying uh, exactly that, who's on, the, who's on this call. Um, so please do do the exercises. You'll get so much more out of it. Um, so yeah, huge thank you for, to you all for dialing in. And um, I, hope, I hope you enjoy the book and uh, have a lovely evening. Stay safe in lockdown. Use the opportunity to become a monk uh, or a hunk as opposed to the other two. And um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll see you all in person soon enough.